Hey, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, on behalf of the um, Evergreen International Conference Committee and Outreach Committee, I'd like to welcome you to day three of the Evergreen International Online Conference. We would like to thank Mobius for sponsoring track one today and Equinox Open Library Initiative for sponsoring the closed captioning for the conference. If you're not familiar with Zoom's uh, webinar controls, please take a moment to acquaint yourself with them now. Feel free to use the Q&A or the chat for questions or use the raise hand button to be called on to speak. The chat is also a good place to make comments and interact with other attendees. If you're not familiar, in the chat window, uh, please choose the drop down uh, to all panelists and attendees. Otherwise, you'll just be sending messages to the panelists. This session is being recorded and the recording will be available on the Evergreen Project YouTube channel after the conference sometime. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Galen Charlton, who is going to begin the developer's update. Okay, uh, greetings everybody. Uh, thanks uh, for taking uh, the time to attend uh, and uh, to uh, learn more about uh, what uh, the Evergreen Net Development uh, community uh, has uh, been up to. Um, so this, of course, in many respects uh, has been a strange uh, year and in a particular a uh, strange uh, past uh, few months. Um, but the work of uh, the project uh, continues, uh, of course, and since uh, the previous uh, conference, uh, we have uh, achieved uh, major releases uh, for both OpenSurf uh, and uh, Evergreen. Um, Evergreen 3.4.0 uh, came out uh, in October. Uh, at the same time, uh, we did a release of OpenSurf uh, 3.2. Uh, the Evergreen 3.5 uh, cycle is uh, underway. Uh, with uh, the beta release uh, occurring in March and uh, with work uh, proceeding to do the general uh, release uh, later, uh, you know, in uh, the next uh, few days. But more uh, about uh, 3.5 uh, will come later during this uh, presentation where uh, co-release manager Chris uh, Sharp uh, will be uh, speaking. Um, this uh, development update uh, session, which uh, we've uh, been holding uh, for several years, uh, has uh, lent uh, itself uh, to Evergreen's own calendar. Um, in a particular, we have uh, been using going from one conference uh, to uh, the next uh, as uh, the uh, kind of uh, reporting period uh, for development. So one of uh, the things uh, that I like uh, to do with uh, these updates is uh, to talk uh, a little bit uh, about uh, the numbers. Now, of course, in one sense, we might be cheating a little bit uh, since uh, due to the unfortunate uh, cancellation of the in-person uh, conference, um, We've had a uh, few more uh, weeks uh, between when that would have been held uh, and uh, this online uh, conference. By the way, a uh, big uh, shout out uh, to the Evergreen Outreach uh, Committee for organizing this uh, online uh, conference uh, at uh, effectively the last uh, minute. Um, but as far as Evergreen development is uh, concerned, um, we have uh, been keeping up uh, a steady uh, pace. Um, the numbers uh, for this uh, cycle are comparable to the numbers uh, for last year. Um, so 781 individual commits uh, in Evergreen's master branch uh, since uh, the uh, conference uh, in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, with uh, a total of 49 uh, patch authors. Um, one thing I should mention is both Evergreen documentation updates and uh, code updates are stored in uh, the same code repository. So the commit uh, and patch uh, author counts uh, 
reflect both coding work and documentation work. And that's a very appropriate uh, thing uh, since code uh, and documentation necessarily, or at least I should, go hand in hand. The work of uh, coding, of course, also uh, needs a lot of uh, checking. So many, many thanks uh, to the 69 uh, people who have helped uh, to participate uh, in uh, direct uh, testing by signing off uh, uh, after reviewing patches. So in addition to the input, uh, the output uh, for this uh, cycle has been two open source releases, including betas, and 23 evergreen releases, uh, again, including beta releases. Uh, and that account uh, includes um, major releases, which uh, come out uh, twice a year, one in uh, the spring and one in uh, the autumn, uh, as well as uh, main maintenance uh, releases. So, um, One of the things about the Evergreen development community uh, is that it is not um, just a matter of people on the one hand writing code and then tossing the code over to the people writing the documentation and then uh, tossing it uh, back uh, in an eternal game of uh, ping pong. Um, this is uh, a project uh, that tries to bring in far more people uh, to do the very important uh, task of testing uh, the changes uh, that uh, get made. And one of uh, the mechanisms uh, that uh, we use uh, to do this is a bug uh, squashing week. Uh, and a bit, great big uh, shout out uh, to uh, Taryn McKenna of uh, the Georgia Public uh, Library Service uh, for uh, organizing uh, these uh, bug squashing weeks. But what is a bug uh, squashing week? Um, it is uh, an organized event uh, where, you know, critical bugs uh, get identified. Um, they, the fixes uh, get made available on staging servers uh, and shout out uh, to the Mobius Consortium uh, for uh, doing an excellent uh, job of uh, putting up uh, staging uh, systems um, and inviting people uh, during an intensive uh, week uh, to go through, look uh, at uh, the fixes uh, and um, see which ones work uh, and ensure that uh, they get signed off on and merged uh, into um, Evergreen. So there were uh, two uh, primary bug uh, squashing uh, weeks um, since uh, the previous uh, conference, one in May uh, tw uh, 2019 and uh, another in uh, September. Um, there was also uh, an effort uh, to do one in March, uh, although um, world events uh, kind of uh, ran into that. So, what happens during the bug squashing week? Um, new bugs uh, get uh, reported. Um, people comment uh, on uh, the bug tracking system called Launchpad. Um, patches that uh, get submitted uh, to uh, update uh, uh, those uh, uh, bugs and hopefully address them. Uh, and in some cases, patches uh, that had been submitted a while back get so-called rebased, uh, i.e updated to ensure that they work uh, against uh, the current state of uh, the Evergreen code base. And patches also get uh, signed off and uh, from there uh, get merged uh, into the core uh, and then subsequently uh, get uh, released. Um, so the uh, efforts have been healthy uh, the past uh, couple of uh, uh, squashing weeks. Um, there is a tiny a bit of uh, spookiness uh, in that the number of new bugs are reported, as well as the number of uh, participants uh, in both uh, cycles um, were exactly uh, the same. 
Um, now, public access question, of course, uh, is uh, something uh, that is also a background activity of uh, the uh, community. Obviously, you can fix uh, a bug or test a bug fix at any time. Um, but Bugs uh, Squashing Week uh, is an excellent opportunity to uh, get concentrated effort uh, onto uh, the you know, ongoing uh, task of uh, flattening all uh, these uh, bugs. Um, but uh, Bug Squashing Week uh, is not uh, the only uh, way of uh, addressing um, or doing concentrated uh, you know, feedback. Um, another you know, uh, event uh, that's uh, been uh, done is uh, the so-called Feedback Fest. Now, Feedback Fest is uh, different uh, from Bug uh, Squashing Week uh, in that um, it's uh, intentionally uh, aiming at um, addressing uh, the queue of so-called pull requests or changes uh, to uh, the Evergreen uh, code base uh, that uh, stack up both as bugs that get fixed, but also as uh, new features uh, get uh, developed. So the notion uh, for Feedback Fest is there's a focus on the pull requests uh, and we go through uh, uh, as a, a uh, as a, a community. Uh, although Feedback Fest is uh, developer centric, uh, figure out which ones uh, can be merged uh, and figure out uh, which ones uh, may uh, need additional work. Um, so in both cases, uh, there's again this uh, slightly creepy uh, little numeric uh, synchronicity uh, in both uh, the May. Uh, and the July uh, you know, timeframes, uh, we have uh, 55 full uh, requests uh, that got some sort of action on them and uh, an average of uh, about 20 uh, pull requests merged uh, in each uh, cycle. Um, so one thing I will uh, say, and I should have said this at the beginning of uh, the update, uh, is if you have questions about any of the jargon I'm using, uh, please uh, don't hesitate uh, to ask, um, you know, via you know, chat or the Q&A feature. So uh, there were two uh, feedback fest, festi, um, perhaps, uh, that were done for the uh, cycle uh, leading up to Evergreen 3.4, um, but there was also a feedback uh, fest uh, for the uh, 3 5 uh, cycle held in February um, with um, quite a few patches uh, signed off, um, 31 merged, uh, and a number of uh, you know, bugs uh, that uh, got, um, uh, uh, got uh, feedback. So, you know, both the uh, bug uh, squashing week and uh, the feedback uh, fest uh, are an important uh, way of uh, helping to make sure uh, that uh, the work uh, you know, of uh, uh, developing Evergreen continues uh, to move uh, forward. So I would uh, like to um, give a shout out uh, to everybody who uh, collectively uh, participated uh, in Bug Squashing Week and or uh, the uh, feedback I've asked um, with uh, and a special shout out uh, to uh, the uh, new uh, developers uh, group. Um, and one of the things uh, that uh, I think that makes uh, the Evergreen uh, community uh, great is development is not purely the domain of uh, the people writing uh, the code. Uh, it is uh, something where uh, we're uh, looking uh, to um, have everybody who has an interest uh, in using uh, Evergreen be able to participate in uh, the development uh, process uh, and uh, to uh, give uh, you know, uh, feedback. Now, 
there's also a hidden agenda be, uh, behind Feedback Fest and Bug Squashing Week, which is, of course, growing uh, the numbers of uh, people who are writing uh, code uh, and uh, documentation patches. So I would like to give a shout out to these people that I've identified as being first time code or documentation patch authors since last year's conference. Uh, you know, many thanks uh, to uh, these uh, intrepid uh, people. Uh, and I hope I got it right. Uh, if your name should be on here, uh, please don't hesitate uh, to reach out to me and I will make sure that uh, it uh, shows up uh, on the final version of uh, this uh, slide uh, deck uh, that will be uh, put on at the Evergreen website. Uh, and, you know, again, this is uh, something where um, you too uh, can, um, you know, join uh, this uh, list. Um, you know, the hopefully uh, we have the uh, many. So, um, if you do have an interest uh, in writing a code uh, or writing documentation or both, um, please don't hesitate uh, to reach out. Um, specific uh, ways you can do so is writing to the Evergreen uh, Development mailing list or joining the documentation interest group or participating on the IRC channel. Um, also, any of uh, the core committers uh, and uh, DIG uh, people uh, would be happy to, um, you know, uh, be uh, contacted uh, as well. So, moving uh, on uh, with uh, this, uh, I would also like to give uh, a, a shout out to um, Jeff Davis of uh, the BC Libraries uh, Co-op uh, in British Columbia, who, um, during this cycle uh, was named our newest uh, core committer. Um, so many thanks uh, to Jeff uh, for years of uh, solid uh, development work uh, that led up uh, to his uh, being uh, nominated uh, as a committer. And I agree, Chris, uh, Zoom really should have uh, an applause feature. So, Now that uh, we've talked uh, about the most important uh, part of this uh, presentation, namely the people who are contributing to making Evergreen awesome, uh, let's uh, move on to discussing what uh, all the effort uh, you know, is uh, focused on. So I'm uh, going to um, talk a bit about Evergreen 3.4. Uh, what made it into the release, um, and uh, you know, give uh, you know a, a very brief uh, as a peek at uh, some of the functionality, and then uh, after I talk about uh, Evergreen three four, um, we'll uh, lean on uh, Chris uh, Sharp and Bill Erickson as co-release managers of uh, three five to talk a bit more about the three uh, five. Um, but on to Evergreen 3.4. Um, one of uh, the significant uh, new uh, you know, uh, features was one to age uh, billings and uh, payments. Now, aging in this uh, context is uh, Evergreen's uh, a feature to sever the link uh, between a transaction and the patron who made it um, to help uh, promote and uh, protect patron privacy. Evergreen has for many years had features uh, to age uh, loans uh, and hold requests on a, a schedule controlled uh, by the uh, library or consortium. Um, Bill Erickson uh, spearheaded a feature uh, to um, uh, apply this uh, to billings as well, uh, namely, once a patron uh, has uh, concluded uh, their financial obligation to a library, um, the record shouldn't uh, follow them around uh, indefinitely. Um, so many thanks uh, to Bill for devising the feature and also many, many thanks uh, to uh, Jason Stevenson 
uh, for leading an effort uh, to uh, you know resolve um, some uh, you know bugs with uh, the initial uh, deployment of that uh, feature. Um, another uh, feature of note is uh, an action trigger event definition. Uh, also, Ron finds uh, to um, mention, you know, to give them a notification if uh, a patron's borrowing privileges would be suspended uh, because they've hit uh, the limit uh, set by the library uh, for the fine, bal uh, fine balance uh, standing uh, penalty. So, um, Another big theme of Evergreen 3.4 was angularization. Uh, now, this is not uh, the process of uh, making Evergreen stop uh, being a cuddly circle uh, and turning it into um, something that's uh, spikier and sharper. Um, it's rather uh, the ongoing effort uh, to modernize uh, the web staff uh, interface uh, using uh, the Angular JavaScript uh, you know, framework. So new interfaces uh, that uh, were converted to Angular uh, during the 3-4 cycle include uh, various administrative interfaces, including the organizational unit, standing penalty, and the permission group uh, admin pages, as well as most of the local administration in general. Um, a new uh, feature was also um, uh, devised uh, to do server-managed uh, print uh, templates. This is a work in progress, um, but when it comes to full uh, fruition, uh, we'll make it easier uh, to do things like define receipt uh, templates at the server level, customized uh, per org unit if you want, uh, and ensure uh, that uh, every staff user uh, is using uh, the same uh, templates. Um, and there, have, uh, there has also been a fair amount of work uh, improving uh, the, Angular, uh, uh, the Angular grid, uh, including uh, adding uh, support uh, for uh, filtering uh, fields on uh, the grids. So um, I want to step uh, back uh, one moment uh, and surface uh, something uh, from uh, the uh, chat and give a shout out to John Amison of uh, CW Mars, uh, who uh, did a significant uh, work uh, you know, with uh, testing and bug fixing uh, for building aging. So, Jumping on to other things uh, in Evergreen 3.4, the Angular staff catalog um, got uh, uh, several updates, including a new tab uh, for listing holds on a title, uh, a call number br uh, browser feature, and uh, features uh, to uh, set up search uh, templates uh, so that you can repeat uh, searches uh, and uh, keep uh, a list of uh, past uh, searches done in the um, uh, in uh, the staff uh, uh, interface. Uh, another big aspect uh, for Evergreen 3.4 was uh, a refresh of uh, the uh, booking module um, led uh, by uh, Jane Sandberg of Len Benton uh, Community uh, College, which you know has resulted not only in uh, the uh, booking uh, module looking uh, much better, uh, but turning it into something that uh, I think um, many more libraries uh, will start uh, to adopt. So kudos uh, to Jane uh, for uh, leading uh, that effort. Um, another feature uh, in uh, Evergreen 3.4, um, you know, because we shouldn't forget uh, uh, about the patrons after all, is a public uh, catalog feature to add book uh, carousels uh, to uh, the OPAC. And another feature of note uh, is for the Evergreen SIP server, um, improving the ability to um, configure 
what details uh, about finds can be communicated over the SIP server, which uh, will make uh, the lives of uh, people setting up and using uh, various uh, third-party payment uh, gate uh, gateways uh, easier um, to avoid things like uh, the patrons being told, hey, you owe the library three bucks. Uh, and the patron not necessarily knowing from uh, the payment interface what the, those uh, fees are for. Um, surfacing another shout out uh, from uh, chat. Um, here's one uh, to Christina Burns uh, for uh, also doing significant work uh, on uh, the booking uh, module uh, refresh. So, um, there are no cat uh, pictures uh, in this uh, deck, uh, I apologize. But uh, we uh, do uh, have an opportunity for a bad uh, pun. Um, the cataloging uh, features in 3.4, um, you know, uh, do have uh, you know, some nice uh, you know, little additions, including the ability to can't back out of a uh, edit if uh, you're editing a record uh, in the record merge interface. Uh, the ability to export records uh, from the staff catalog uh, basket. Um, some uh, additional options uh, for overlaying copies that are in copy import. Uh, and uh, displaying codes in the physical characteristics uh, uh, wizard. So if uh, we move on, to some of the screenshots. Um, this is uh, an example of um, one of the new booking uh, interfaces. Uh, in this case, uh, the Anchor interface uh, for managing uh, reservations. Um, for the staff uh, catalog, um, what we have uh, here are examples of uh, the holds uh, ta uh, tab uh, in the Anchor staff catalog. Um, the, uh, an example of the dropdown for setting up a search uh, template. So this uh, search uh, template in the example uh, will, is a setup uh, to uh, pre-fill the search uh, form uh, to limit searches uh, to musical sound recordings, as well as a screenshot of uh, what the anchor call number browse uh, uh, looks like. So, um, <laughs> How not an actual cat, uh, why not an actual uh, cat uh, cameo? Um, sadly, I have uh, my door closed, uh, but uh, there might be uh, some uh, uh, possibilities. So let's uh, take a look at the carousels. Um, this uh, is, an, uh, is an example from a library uh, in Pennsylvania actually using their carousels. Uh, they currently have this uh, displayed uh, on the OPAC uh, homepage. Um, and for this, uh, they've uh, set it up uh, to display new items. Um, but the carousels uh, feature uh, it has a flexibility uh, beyond that. Um, you can set up a carousel uh, that you maintain manually uh, with the contents of a record bucket. It can uh, display recently um, you know, circulated uh, items uh, as well as uh, new items. Uh, carousels uh, can be cycled through um, manually uh, by the patron hitting uh, the next or previous uh, button. Um, they can also be animated. Oh. So um, Chris, uh, please do not encourage my cats uh, to uh, crawl through uh, the ventilation. So let's uh, take a look at uh, cataloging. Uh, what we have uh, here uh, are uh, examples of um, exporting records uh, from the basket and the staff interface. Um, the cancel edit button in uh, the um, mark merge interface, as well as uh, the physical characteristics at wizard displaying not only the label of a fixed field value, uh, but also uh, via code. And jumping forward uh, to the Angular administrative uh, interfaces, uh, we have 
examples of uh, the permission uh, group uh, interface. Um, as you can see, uh, a tree of uh, the various profiles on the left-hand side, as well as interfaces uh, uh, for setting the permissions that apply to that uh, profile. The org unit uh, editor, uh, again, uh, has a similar tree of org units. And from uh, here, um, you can set things like the org unit uh, name, hours of operations, and addresses. But one of the big uh, benefits of uh, the Anchor org uh, unit interface um, is it's much less fiddly uh, than uh, the old uh, Dojo one was. Uh, and uh, we have, um, uh, you know, uh, as well, you know, just a screenshot of, uh, the, of a part of the index uh, page uh, for uh, local uh, administration. So um, that's it uh, for uh, three, uh, four. Um, so at this point, uh, I'd uh, like uh, to have um, Chris uh, Sharp and uh, Bill Erickson uh, talk a bit uh, about uh, three, five. Uh, and just let me know when you want me to advance uh, the slides. Thank you, Galen. Um, I, I'm going to speak for a minute about um, my experience being a co-release manager, which is uh, a new model for managing releases. Um, this was suggested back at the uh, Hackaway in November in Indiana uh, to both take the load off the main release manager and also to provide us uh, an opportunity for people who had not done the job before to learn without having it all voiced on them with, with really no training or examples. Um, so our original release schedule uh, had Evergreen 3.5 heading towards March. Um, and um, I'll step back a second and say that uh, a lot of y'all know this, but but Bill Bill Erickson and I grew up in the same hometown, and we, we knew each other as children. Um, and we went to different school systems, so we didn't see each other for a very long time and kind of reacquainted ourselves within the Pines uh, Evergreen world. Um, but it was it was a pleasure working with Bill. I've I've always found him to be uh, competent and uh, just just a great leader in the community. So I was really excited to get that opportunity to work with Bill. Uh, on this on this project unfortunately the march uh release schedule was shot to pieces as was everybody's uh march schedules uh because of the pandemic um so <clears throat> several several things got pushed back um i think uh jason stevenson said earlier in chat that the the final release i agree will be uh, better for the delay. I think I think we have a few things to work out, um, but there's some very exciting features, and I'm going to hand it over to Bill to talk about those. Uh, hi, Mike. Check. <laughs> Working fine. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Chris. Thanks for the kind words. Um, the uh, and I agree. The uh, the co RM idea was a good one. Uh, I think it worked well. Um, and I look forward to continuing that in the future. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, we did, uh, you know, everyone kind of got scattered to the wind uh, last few months. Um, there's a lot of stuff people are, 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 are working on and dealing with. Um, and uh, it did force us to uh, delay the release. <clears throat> and I also agree that uh, the, the final product will be significantly better because of it. Um, we were able to get quite a bit more bug fixes in uh, that would not have made it in otherwise, or would have made it into a later a later version of the release. So, I'm uh, in that sense, I'm very proud of what we've done. Um, so, I'll, I'll mention some of the uh, the features uh, that was that we're looking forward to in 3.5. Um, uh, next slide, please. So um, we'll start with a, a, a kind of a bullet here, and then we'll look at some uh, screen caps of these uh, afterwards. Um, <clears throat> an action trigger hook for patron self-registration. Uh, so we have the, the interface in Evergreen where you can see the uh, pending patrons who have uh, registered via the uh, online form. Uh, now it's possible to set up notifications 
so the staff can um, be uh, notified of these uh, and so that it's not necessarily required that they go uh, check this interface. Um, the, uh, and, and another continuing theme, of course, is the, uh, the angularization, <laughs> the making things pointy. Um, the, uh, we already had <clears throat> partial mark editor support in Angular in, uh, as part of the Angular staff, the experimental Angular staff catalog. Uh, and now um, as a 3.5, we have the enriched mark editor, which is, um, uh, you know, the people call the full editor or, or the front editor or the main editor. Uh, but this is the one that gives you all of the um, sort of context information uh, and the, uh, you know, the fixed fields are sort of broken out in a way uh, that makes it uh, a little bit easier to edit um, or gives you some more guidance in any sense. Um, other staff catalog uh, changes. Um, the search highlighting was ported over. That's a fairly recent addition to Evergreen in general. Uh, and now it's uh, brought over to the uh, staff catalog as well. Uh, there had been a, a button in the catalog that was disabled uh, for uh, searching for patrons during holds placement and we enabled the button. <laughs> and uh, behind that button uh, actually is a, a, you know, a dialogue that allows you to search for patrons uh, and then to select a patron uh, for which to place a hold from the catalog. And um, another one that uh, there, there was a lot of enthusiasm around was in the uh, record detail interface in the catalog. Uh, there are various tabs for viewing holds and, and holdings maintenance, et cetera. And uh, there's now another one that shows you the patron view since the um, staff catalog is different than the patron catalog, uh, we wanted to make it easy for uh, staff to, at a glance, see what the patient will see on uh, for a specific record. So that was added. Um, <clears throat> uh, the update hold notification information, I, I'm, I'm really happy about this one. This is something that's been in discussion in IRC and in various other places for, for years. Uh, and I'm, I'm so glad to see that this was um, finally uh, uh, coded and added. Uh, we'll see a picture of it in a second. But uh, the, the general idea is you know, we stamp hold requests with a phone notification number. Um, and then if the patient later changes the phone number, now there are uh, various entry points where you can say, hey, you have a hold that's going to use a different phone number. Do you want it to use this new one? So those can be updated uh, uh, by in batch to, at, uh, at the time the phone number's changed. <clears throat> and then lastly here, uh, there uh, some hooks have been added to make the uh, patron catalog easier to uh, sort of theme and style to your local uh, needs uh, via CSS without necessarily having to, um, you know, get quite so involved in the, in the code itself. You can uh, sort of add in uh, CSS to make some uh, simple tweaks. Uh, next slide, please, Caitlin. <clears throat> So now we have some pictures of the of some of the things I mentioned. We have the uh, search highlighting, uh, and that's going to be you know fairly similar to the way the uh, the patron catalog handles that. Uh, and then um, up on the right is another uh, view of the search highlighting, and below that uh, is a uh, view of the patron view tab. So it essentially just gives you a picture of the patron catalog uh, right under that tab in a kind of a read only frame, so that you can. Uh, you know, compare that to what you're seeing in the staff catalog. And then there, uh, the button that I mentioned before that was disabled and now enabled, the uh, search for patron button um, in the uh, staff catalog holds placement form. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Various shots of the um, Angular Mark Editor, the what I call the enriched editor. The um, so it. it uh, it brought it brings over all the the functionality of the uh, of the uh, mark editor that we that we know and love. Um, <clears throat> we have the uh, physical characteristics wizard so that walks you through the 007 uh, compilation. The uh, context menus are there. Um, that'll so that'll be in in for for various tags and subfields and uh, in some cases the actual content of the fields. Uh, and then, of course, we have the uh, manage authority links. So um, you can this will, as as before, launch a form from the um, mark editor for a controlled field, and it'll uh, bring up the uh, authority browse, and then let you go through there and 
select from existing options or create new authority records uh, for the uh, bit record. Next slide. And then here's the uh, hold notification updates. So on the uh, at the top we have a catalog view, uh, and this is a situation where the uh, patrons can uh, apply the updates. And then uh, down below we have a staff view of where the staff can uh, uh, apply the updates um, at a at a, a number change time, basically. Uh, next slide. Um, so at this point, I'll um, hand it back to Galen. And and just before I do, I just wanted to uh, give a, a huge thanks to Galen um, for corralling this whole presentation. Uh, as always, I, I really appreciate it. So uh, back to you, Galen. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, and I'm going to take uh, that uh, baton and then uh, immediately uh, uh, hand it uh, to Rogan uh, to talk a bit uh, <laughs> about the hackway. Okay, thank you, Galen. Uh, I will spare people the reading of numbers off the page. They can read them themselves. But for those who do not know, the Hackaway is an annual event where the developers sort of put their screens to the side a little bit and meet face to face. And for about two and a half days, work and work in a very concentrated fashion, but also get to remove the impediments of IRC and email and all those other things and have live discussions both to do specific work, and you'll see that reflected in the numbers here. But that last line at the bottom that just says a great deal of coffee and discussion encompasses a lot of what the Hackaway is about. And we had a lot of great discussions this year. Blake presented earlier in the conference on Antora, and a lot of that discussion happened at the Hackaway. We, there were a lot of discussions about the co-release manager, which Chris talked about and has borne fruit, as well as architectural things related to Evergreen itself. So I really want to thank Evergreen Indiana. They are our hosts every other year. They are amazing, and they deserve all the applause in the world for what they do for us in the Evergreen community. And we will be back there, knock on wood if you have any actual wood near you, uh, the world will be in a shape that we will be back there in Indiana next year. So, next slide. So that brings us to what about the Hackaway this year? Well, there, there was serious consideration to canceling it. The public health situation is still evolving in the United States. We don't know what it will look, by, look like by October, but after deliberation and discussion, there seemed to be a feeling that there was a desire to have some event, even if it wasn't as ideal as having people meet in person. And honestly, since the Hackaway first began, electronic meeting tools have become much, much better. Uh, in fact, they've become much, much better in just the last few months due to the pressure and need for them and the greater society. So what I'm going to be doing is in early July, uh, after the conference is over and the dust has settled a little bit, I'm going to be reaching out to a group of volunteers. These are not selected yet, so feel free to volunteer yourselves. And we are going to start planning the online hack away. My main criteria for this is I'm going to be looking for tools that are not top-down driven. In other words, not creating a strict schedule or regimented group of presentations, but will allow people to easily move from group to group and self-create working groups to facilitate what the Hackaway has always been, which is very much user-driven and participant-driven. So that's all I have for now, but I will be sending out more to the mailing list in early July. All right. Thank you, Galen. I'll toss it back to you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Rogan. Um, so, um, give me a moment, uh, let it uh, not uh, be said uh, that uh, I don't occasionally bow uh, to popular pressure. First, uh, I would uh, like, uh, like uh, to uh, thank uh, everybody uh, for uh, their time uh, and attention. 
Um, and it uh, looks like uh, that uh, we have a, a few minutes uh, for any questions uh, that uh, you would like to ask uh, about uh, evergreen development. Um, you can uh, do so uh, via chat or uh, via the uh, Q&A feature. Galen, we also have one person with their hand up. Um, so Laura PC, I've unmuted you if you want to ask your question. That was an accident, I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. <laughs> okay, well, um, not seeing any other questions. Uh, again, I would uh, like to uh, thank everybody uh, for uh, their uh, time and attention. Uh, I see that uh, Rogan's uh, getting a lot of volunteers uh, to help out with uh, the Hackaway, um, so please don't hesitate uh, to uh, reach out to him. Um, and I would also like uh, to thank uh, everybody uh, involved uh, in the Evergreen Development uh, Project uh, for spending a lot of uh, time, energy, and passion uh, in service uh, to libraries and uh, their patrons. So thank you very much. Uh, and. Uh, onward uh, to uh, the uh, next uh, you know, set of uh, presentations.